Hi, I'm Josh Ackman with the Customer Service Department at Park Industries. And in this video, we're going to be working on spindle crocs malfunctions on a velocity for the smart spindle. Uh, so if you're having where it's not reading, you're getting negative, positive crocs alarms, or it's not combing correctly, this video will give you a start on where to look. We're going to concentrate on the negative crocs on this video. And uh, if it is positive, it'll just be the front crocs of the smart spindle, and the negative will be the rear. Um, if it's not homing, it, the homing crocs is just your center one. So to start out with here, we already removed our cover um, for our belt here and cleaned that all up just to save some time here. But we're going to take a 13 millimeter wrench and we're going to start by just unscrewing our negative prox. So our negative prox is the rear prox. This is our homing prox in the center. And our um, front prox is our positive prox. Also take note that on the splitter cable, the how you have one wire by itself, a center wire, and then a wire to the back. This wire by itself is going to be your positive prox, the one that's more towards itself there. Your home prox is the center cable, and then your outside one there is the negative prox. We're just going to unscrew this prox cable here. Let that fall, and we're going to take this prox out. So I'm just going to crack it loose. And I'm going to turn that prox and spin this guy all the way out. Later in the video, we will show you how to set these again. We also have a printable version document on our website of how to set these spindle proxes. So if this is the prox we were having issues with, first thing we want to look for is to see if the prox was screwed in too far. It should have the yellow end on the end here. If you notice yours, if it was screwed in too far, the puck that travels inside that this prox reads on might, be, might have snipped this off and you won't have the yellow end and you can see some wires or it looks bent or something like that. So we're going to plug this top in and then we're just going to flag this prox. All it needs to do is read something metal. So we can just flag it on our, on our miter arm here and we're just going to touch it like this and you can see how it turns on and off. Hopefully the camera is catching that light there. And we're also going to double check now on the front of the machine by the screen, we're going to go to our PLC inputs and make sure that the input is turning on and off. That would tell us that the prox is good and the cabling's good. If it's not, we can try a new prox and see if the cabling's good. And if it's a brand new prox that's not and it's still not fire, then we can uh, see if uh, then if it's probably the cable. But. Let's go to the front by the screen and see if our PLC inputs are turning on and off when we fire this manually. Okay, Okay. so now that we're at the front screen here, I'm going to go to Machine Diagnostics and then the PLC inputs. And right now, you can see that I'm flagging I64.1 and that's my prox wire that I'm looking for. You can see it's turning on and off. That is the correct one for this particular machine. The machine, your machine may vary. You'd want to take a look at your electrical prints to see which input number is for which prox that you are working on. Um, in this case now, I can see it's flagging, so that means my prox is good, my cable's good, and everything's good there. 
if I was not getting something turning on and off there, I'd start by replacing the procs first there. Um, I could maybe borrow another prox from the smart spindle, one that I know that was working, and flag it to see if that's working. Um, and then it would tell me that it was the prox. Otherwise, if it still did not work, it could be my splitter cable. And we'll go back and take a look again at the splitter cable where that connects on the back side of the machine. Okay, now that we're back to the back side of the machine here, and we know our prox and our cable are good, now we're going to show how to um, set the props. But uh, first, if your cable was the bad one, your cable, you have your three that connect here, it runs underneath, goes through this track, and then about halfway up this um, cross member here is where you'll have a connection point for that splitter cable. From there then, you have a flying leads cable that runs back to the uh, electrical cabinet where that terminates but usually the flying leads cable is not the issue usually it will be if you do have an issue you know, either the prox or the cable the splitter cable itself in the trap where it's been flexing so let's uh set the prox now here well i like to also set these proxes is i'll just take a small screwdriver here and i'm just going to rotate my spindle back until I can feel feel it hit my screwdriver and then I will pull my screwdriver out and rotate it back just a little more and if I take a flashlight I will see that there will be a brass puck in front of that pole. I'm not sure if the camera will catch it but we'll do our best to capture it and uh, maybe we'll insert an image there for you also. Um, once I get that set, so once I get that brass puck on there, I'm going to thread my prox all the way in until I lightly touch that brass puck. All three proxes should be set very close to the same. So if I wanted to, if I know this homing prox is set correctly, I could take a measurement off of that also. But we're going to double check this one and make sure. So right there, I just touched off and I can feel the pressure and I'm gonna go half a turn back and I just use the LED indicator as my indicator there. I'm gonna jam that tight. And now if I hook this up, you can see my home prox is already reading and my negative prox here should light up also. It did not light up yet, so let's... So I'm just going a quarter turn back and um, I'll set that. On this machine, actually, it is a reverse contact, and it will not be the same as the homing proc, so this one will not light up when that is enabled. That should set that, and then that should make it so that your puck inside does not read there. And I just spun it a little bit, and now it did turn on. So. Once we do have that set, we want to make sure we seal this off with this blue Loctite or the RTV sealant. That is very important that you seal the back end of your smart spindle. Uh, if you do not, you can get water entering in through the belt 
area and then into the servo and wreck your servo motor. So we'll seal that up real good, let that dry up uh, for the recommended hours before we start running this velocity and uh, we'll go from there. If you have any questions, give us a call at our customer service department and we'll gladly answer them. Thank you.